So there are two things that need to be answered. Okay, so the first thing is priorities in your life. Now I see that it might not apply to everybody in the room. Okay, for the children here, you can just mark out what doesn't apply to you. Okay, um, and then answer it accordingly. Okay, so one being most important. Okay, and ten being least. Okay, be honest with yourself. Okay, I'm not going to collect this back, so this is for you. Okay, and then the second, the second sheet, sorry, no, the second question says, um, just write down the two things, or maybe there's only one thing that you're worried about, okay, at this present moment, and your priorities right now, okay? So there are 10, right? There are 10, we're down this part of page, because it starts from 11, so we're yeah. checking. Oh my goodness me, look at that. It starts from 11. <laughs> okay, some of them have 11 and some of them have 1. I can blame it on Gustav's computer or something. Okay, just go ahead and just, yeah. Alright, thank you, Eden. Okay, so, have you all all finished? Most, most, mostly? Okay, now, uh, okay, just give me answers. It doesn't matter, not everybody has to have the same thing, okay? Uh, priority, least important, number 10. Just want to hear it. Buying a car. Buying a car. Buying a house, okay. Number 5. Career. Okay. Ministry. Okay, uh, number 2. Health. Health. Okay, uh, number 1. Okay. Marriage. Marriage. Okay. All right. Now, the second one. Two things that worry you. I'm going to turn so you all can tell me what it is. Just whatever. It could be anything, yeah? Maybe a general thing as well. And you will just write it down. So I don't know who's saying it. Right? Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michelle. Okay. Savings that you're worried about. Anything else? <laughs> Finances, health, okay. What else? Maybe two more? Work. What? Sorry, not looking. One more, one more. One more. Now. <laughs> Nothing? That's it? Okay, fine. Okay, so my next question. Why are these things worrying you? Why? It's outside our control. Outside our control, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, anything else? Uh, fear of the future. Like what happened. Yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else want to add to this? Outside our control, fear of the future. No? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so we just leave this leave this on the board okay let me ask you another question uh, have you all heard of virtues the word virtue yeah do we know what a virtue is anybody want to try give it a try I have a mic Wait. I got little min miniature lollipops that I carry in my bag for the children and you will get this. This is strawberry flavored. So, cherry flavored. Anybody? A virtue? Give it a shot. The value or a belief. Okay. Okay. <coughs> yes, okay. Okay, so it's a quality. It's, a, it's an interior kind of a, it's called a disposition, okay, uh, an interior quality or a characteristic that 
makes you want to do good at all times. Okay, it's a firm stance to do good all the time. Virtue, please. No, what? No. Oh, it's not there. Okay. <laughs> sorry, miscommunication, husband, wife. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, Kusa. Okay, fine. Now, our church gives us two types of virtues cardinal virtues and theological virtues okay now we won't talk about the cardinal virtues we'll focus on one of the theological virtues but before that i just want to tell you that theological i mean it comes from it's basically about god knowing his nature knowing the will of god okay so these virtues that we're going to talk about today they um they've been given to us by God, okay. They they also call supernatural virtues. Can anyone name these virtues? <coughs> I saw fortitude. No, but before I forget, Lawrence, you need uh, you get a lollipop. I'll give it to you later. Okay, no, no, just take it, just take it. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, so anybody want to name the virtues, theological virtues? Okay, I'll give you a clue. There are three of them. I heard Joel say something. What did you say, Joel? <laughs> okay. Yeah, Sophie, what did you say, Sophie? Excellent. Faith, hope, and love. Okay. So, very quickly, faith, just to let you know, it's the belief in God and everything that He promises us. Hope is the desire for the kingdom of God okay and charity which is love okay is to loving is to love God above everything else and to will the good of the other person okay so these are the virtues you can google it up later okay but today we're going to focus on hope okay so what is hope <laughs> no, actually, a packet of Smarties. But um, what is hope? That, hope? Yeah, yeah, but give me a definition, do yeah. <laughs> What is hope? I'll tell you what the English dictionary says for the sake of time. Okay? It says it's a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. Okay? Clear? Simple? Clear? Now, let's move to our church the catholic church here's what the catholic church says hope actually is <laughs> <laughs> moving on there there's that much on what hope really is so thank god for the ucat okay because it really puts everything together and this is what hope simply put would be hope is the power by which we firmly desire the kingdom of god by praising and serving him here on earth and by placing our trust in Christ's promise which is eternal life so it is just it is a power because remember I said it has been given by God it's a supernatural virtue okay so it is the power by which we firmly desire the kingdom of God by praising him and serving him here on earth and we place all our trust in Christ's promise of eternal life Okay, so this is what it is. Hope actually pushes beyond the realm of this world. It actually makes you move beyond your struggles, beyond your conflicts. Okay, and it makes you direct your gaze to things of heaven. Because that is what we are called to look at, eternal life. Yeah. Hope is to know that the ultimate good lies beyond this world. Okay? So where am I going with this? Because our topic today is hope in a hopeless situation. Yeah? Okay, I'll tell you. Now, hope is a gift. It is a gift that is given to us by God at baptism. We might not know this. We get faith, hope, love. These are things that have been given to us. Okay? But hope is not the same as optimism okay uh, in his encyclical emeritus benedict 16 um, says this encyclical space alve which means saved by hope it says optimism is a worldly attitude that says 
things will be fine oh things will get better you will be fine things will work out it's it's something nice to say okay and it's fine it's good there's nothing wrong in it okay but when you say it it doesn't necessarily make things better but it does give comfort to the other listening to it but here hope and this is what our church teaches us is directing yourself to overcome sin okay so that you aspire to what is important in our life and that is eternal life okay and that is the promise of christ eternal life and because hope is a virtue that is given to us by god we must continuously ask for it like we ask for grace ask ask for it and once you understand what hope really is that is your main aim is to prepare yourself for eternal life then the way you live your life here on earth will change your sufferings your struggles and the waiting doesn't seem so painful or something you need to get rid of we hope for a happy life right we all want a happy life yes and god wants that for us too but the thing is we want to live it out here and i like this line it says a hope a happy life a happy life is the true destination of our journey okay so the happy life is actually eternal life and that is the destination here on earth this is our journey to that happy life okay and many times we forget that you know when we pray the our father in the our father we pray your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven but do we really mean that your kingdom come on earth your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so you have worldly things like worldly things because we're in this world okay it's not a bad thing i need i hope i get a job i hope i find that one the one person to marry i hope i get that raise i hope my migration papers come through all of which is good but if it doesn't happen within the time frame that we expect how do we feel think about that how do you feel but when you place your hope in god even if it doesn't happen you don't despair you don't become angry instead you praise him you understand that the waiting period is longer or maybe there's something else in store jeremiah 29:11 says for i know well the plans i have in mind for you plans for your welfare not for your woe so as to give you a future of hope and you know we can try and limit our sufferings but we cannot completely eliminate it and so even if it gets difficult you'll embrace it because your hope is not in the things of the world now it's looking outward it's placed in the truth that you have been made for eternal life okay so again once we accept that concept of hope and it's not just a concept it's the truth okay hope is about looking ahead looking at the kingdom of god striving for that then the worldly hope the worldly hope doesn't seem so worldly anymore because then it takes on a christian meaning which means which is hope is then our ability to see the light of christ even in our darkness our ability to see the light of christ even in our darkness and you know the christian symbol of hope the christian symbol of hope is the anchor okay and even scripture speaks about it we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure pope francis in one of his addresses recently said christians should get on with things living life with joy and avoid complaining full stop that's all he said he says suffering okay that is the struggles and our tribulations and everything that we go through saints tell us through the ages it's not something to run or hide from but to embrace it as god's love for us you know what the during the way of the cross we pray lord let me partake in your suffering you know the hymn that we sing 
uh, one of the lines is may we share your pain with you and then when we experience the slightest bit of discomfort or trouble we say lord please take this away take it away take it away now please take it away and here are a few quotes by saints on the value of suffering this is saint madeline sophie barat okay she's a french uh, nun okay she is known as the teacher for theologians she says we must suffer in order to go to god we forget this truth far too often we have our very own saint teresa of calcutta who says suffering is not a punishment nor is it a fruit of sin it is a gift of god he allows us to share in his suffering and make up for the sins of the world Saint Ignatius of Loyola If God sends you many sufferings it is a sign that he has great plans for you and certainly wants to make you a saint And then the last one is for, by Saint Therese of Lisieux Suffering is the very best gift he has to give us He gives it only to his chosen friends And you know like this there's so many quotes I struggle to choose There's so many so many like this okay and we've always been told saints were ordinary people yeah but they knew who they belonged to they knew their final destination they knew that nothing could happen without god so they were very clear they were brimming with hope for them god was the only thing that mattered another thing to remember when you feel hopeless when you feel rejected depressed frustrated You need to know that the father is very fond of you. He loves you. You must tell yourself that the father in heaven is fond of me. Repeat it to yourself. Because think about it, do I allow myself to be loved by God? You know we've heard this so many times in the group. Embrace learn to embrace the leper within yourself. Start accepting yourself for who you are. and where you are in your life right now you know we when we live this way we form a relationship with the one who is life and love itself okay because what redeems man love why love because you know when you're down when someone shows you affection when someone shows you that care that's love okay now in 2 weeks time we celebrate the resurrection of our lord our hope and jesus gives us all the senses so that we can experience him through scripture through prayer through visuals through the church through our friends and jesus wants you to experience his love the way jesus wants to work it out for you in your life um you know when i was expecting um jiana one of the things that we normally do is uh, you know the mother and the baby get a massage done and because of our financial financial situation there was no way we could do it this time so we said okay it's fine you know there are so many babies who don't get massage and it's really okay because it would cost about 2000 and we didn't have that money let it go that was it uh, fast forward uh, we had a baby shower or something and when we were just going through something some friends of ours um they wrote a little message said This is so that mummy can relax after her surgery and baby can enjoy a massage. There were two thousand dirhams in that card for us. Totally unexpected. Did not even we didn't even think about it. We just said, "Fine, Lord, we we know that it's not going to happen. That's fine." So here's the thing. Joy. I mean, we were really ecstatic. I mean, what? What? but joy is a very real um a natural consequence okay of following jesus or just just submitting everything to him but on one condition you have to allow jesus to be the center of your life and nicole shared this with us today during her praise and worship come into my life lord take over you know on eagle's wing come live in me allow jesus to be who he really is because you revolve around him and not the other way around okay um emeritus benedict the 16 said put jesus at the center of your life and you will experience him and his love okay so make jesus your center to experience his power he has to be 
the center of your life. He has to be your priority. So if you look at your list and see where God is, if he's priority, great. Keep it that way. But if he isn't, where is your attachment? Okay, because if he is your priority, then everything else will fall into place. Everything that you want, not your spouse, not your career, not your health, not work. Okay, because all these things will hinder in some way from us wanting what is real hope in God. Okay, um, you know, I love Gustav with all my heart. But if I place all my hope in him, I will be disappointed because we were made to place our hope in God. But God brought us two together as husband and wife so that together we place our hope in the Lord. Okay? And St. John of the Cross says this, he says, anything in this world that you, can't that you can't live without, even your life itself, is an attachment. Get rid of it. That's exactly what he says. It sounds very strong, but this is what he means. He means make God your priority. So no matter what happens after that, you will never despair. Because what is despair? Despair is just the lack of hope. And then, no matter what happens, you will also be actively grateful for everything in your life. Uh, we have a nanny now. Uh, just when, I, when we were expecting our third baby, Jojo, um, there was our, our neighbors were leaving for the States and they had their nanny. And their nanny said, oh, you know, they're canceling my visa early. I have three months. I'd like to come and work with you for three months. And I said, great, because we, we didn't find anybody. And it all worked out fine, closer to the date. So now I'm not thinking about this, I'm working on other things. Closer to the date, I say, okay, can I have your paper for, you know, your passport copy for your visa? And she says, oh, you know what, if you find somebody else, take them. I'm like, no, I'm not even looking, I'm doing other things. And this was two weeks before I could deliver. Um, we realized we didn't, we didn't know what to do, apart from praying, uh, asking friends to, ha to help. One week before, I don't know how, just something, something, something. There's this lady in our house with her sister-in-law. Says so she's come from Iraq, whatever. She's not even Mangalorean or Catholic. You know, you want all those things so that your child grows up in a good way, etc. Today, she's a part of our family. I mean, my children love her, our children. Love her. <laughs> you know, we love her. She's so good. She's so good. We trust her so much. And in fact, even giving us this other year is a gift because she said she'd only stay for a year, but now she's renewed it again. She's, she's with us. So you never know how God works. You never, never know how. Thank you, Rachel. So why is it important that we put our hope in God? It's important that we put our hope in God because if you get what you've asked for, okay, like um, a wife, the house, the riches, the, the, the um, being famous, successful, etc. But if you don't know how to deal with it, you don't know how to use it, you don't use it with faith, hope and love, these things will turn around and destroy you. Marriage, uh, if you have an anger problem, you're constantly fighting, constantly, you know, you don't know where that would go. Okay, so but if you have faith, if you have hope, and if you have love, you'd be able, you know, to help yourself. Okay, um, the saints lived out, lived this out very vividly. Okay, they lived out hope very vividly because they never depended on themselves; they depended on the grace of God. Um, saint Josephine Bakita, I don't know if you'll have heard of her. But she's a saint from Sudan. And uh, she was a slave right from a young age. She was sold and she was sold again and sold again and sold again. One of the things uh, that happened to her is her employers, just for fun, they had, this, they had these designs on their wall in uh, Turkey or Africa. I know that's where she was. Um, just for fun, they carved it on her back, the design. Okay, and she had scars from that. But here's what she said. She said, if I were to meet the slave traders who could kidnap me and even those who tortured me, 
I would kneel and kiss their hands, for if that did not happen, I would not be a Christian and religious today. The Lord has loved me so much. We must love everyone. We must be compassionate. Because she says a sure sign of hope is when you are grateful for the very thing that hurts you. You are grateful for the very thing that hurts you. And you know, Jesus wishes to make our human relationships divine like the Trinity. He, he wants us to be in communion with him. You know, during the Easter Vigil, uh, Easter Vigil we renew our baptismal promises, uh, right? Why? So we remind ourselves of whom we belong to, where we come from and where our hope lies. So, if you were to put your hope in Christ, what are you to expect? Actually a surprise. You don't know where it will take you. But you just know that you're saying, Lord, this is what I want. I want this, I want this, I want this. And it's okay to say that. But let your will be done in my life. And as uh, Bishop Barron says, and then just get ready for the roller coaster ride of your life. God is all powerful and He can transform anything and bring about anything. Therefore, when you find that you are struggling, when you find you are in state of hopelessness, you, know, you do not understand how you're going to get out of it. A few things to help you. First one, important one, prayer. Okay? Just constantly praying. Praying when you're walking on the streets, praying in the car. Praying when you're on your way to work, in a mall. Just simple prayers just says, Lord, I really don't know what to do. I really don't know what to do. I want this so badly. Oh, I need to get out of this. Please help me. And that's it. Just constantly doing that. Put your trust in Jesus. And you also have these one-line prayers called Ramas. Um, it's called utterances. It's a Greek word. So it's, it's uh, what you say. You can say it all the time, constantly. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Lead me on in your love. Mary, mother of hope. My mother, my hope. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Okay, these are little, these are one line, one liners that you can say to yourself. Just pray them. Okay, um, and scripture, you can read scripture. The reference said, rejoice in hope, be patient under trial, persevere in prayer. There, it's telling you what you need to do. Okay, because remember our hope now is not the worldly hope. You know that your hope lies in preparing yourself for eternal life. So you're already, you're already fashioned to look towards that, in that direction. The sacraments, we have the Mass. Go as often as you can. Don't force it. Ask for the grace. It's a desire to be able to want to go for Mass. Ask for that. You have the Eucharist. Receive the Lord. Oh, I jumped one. Sorry. Okay. So, sacraments, okay, is the other one. And then you have confession. Our church now, because Lent is a time of abundant grace, they have confession going on uh, Monday to Thursday, practically the whole day. Go. Go because it really helps liberate your soul. I can testify to this because before I joined Come Alive, maybe a year after I was in Come Alive, from the time I had received confirmation till maybe 2003, I probably hadn't gone for confession in 10 years. And going for confession was the most scariest thing ever. But now that I have it in my life, I can't begin to tell you that yes, I do make mistakes, I do fall, but I know that the Lord's there to pick me up. Okay? Um, the other thing is acceptance and offering up of your sufferings. Accept what you're going through. And this is linked with prayer. When you in prayer, I meet Jesus and together we can face the difficulties together. We can face the difficulties. And then what happens is that you enjoy the consolation, the comfort that life would bring. It's okay. It's all right. You know, it's all right not to have that. Because you have Jesus who's helping you. Okay, so that's the acceptance of what you're going through. 
the um, I want to share this. We all know this. Father, if it is your will, take this cup from me. Yet, not my will, but your will be done. This was the greatest human decision ever made. Why? Because at the time of Jesus' execution, this was the most shameful and the most painful way to die. In spite of this, Jesus wanted to do this because of the Father's will. Okay, so our prayer should be Jesus give us the strength and offer up your sufferings. Offer it up. When you offer it up, Jesus receives it and you don't know who is being helped around the world. I was always told, offer up your suffering for the greater good. Just offer up your pain. Offer, up it, offer it up every day. Then you have Mary. Turn to Mary, who is a mother of hope. Okay, she was one of the most intense and radical disciples of Christ. Turn to her in prayer. Ask her to speak to her son. And last but not least, share the hope that you receive. During our trials, during our sufferings, when we come out, we learn things. We, we, we understand why things happened, why they didn't, but we grow from it. Okay, so share this, you know, because share the hope that you have received okay um, you know the next part to sharing it is also showing love when you show love to people who have nobody to talk to people who have no family here yeah so a whatsapp message call them for dinner chai whatever okay because your hope and your joy will transmit will transmit to everybody who comes into your path. You don't have to be, you know, there's, there's a line that says, be a cheerful person even under trial. So you be, hi, God, I'm going through so much pain. I'm so happy. You know, I'm so happy. No, it's okay. Just be yourself. Just try not to complain so much. And I have to tell myself this a lot as well. Okay? And this is something that I was told. Says people don't always remember what you say to them, but they always remember how you made them feel. Okay? So they don't always remember how you, how, what you said to them, but they remember how you made them feel. So radiate that hope that you received. Okay? And I just want to end with this one line, which is, from Emeritus Benedict the 16th. And I love this because it's all about hope. I live in him who stands even when I have fallen apart. I live in him who stands even when I have fallen apart. All right? So I wish you a blessed two weeks of Lent. And be hopeful. Okay? Because the kingdom of God is near. I wanted to say that. <laughs> All right, thank you. There are some um, little <coughs> little cards that I could, distrib could you distribute, please. Uh, these are the the one line prayers that you can say. Okay, and don't forget prayer, accepting your sufferings, looking to the saints, calling on Mother Mary, uh, the sacraments, and sharing the hope. All right.